All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So today what we're going to talk about is Linux in the news for Saturday. We've got some interesting stories today. And to start right off with, I don't know if anybody's seen this story, but Canonical and Microsoft are now working together to make a tailored custom Linux kernel purposely for Azure. Uh, not sure how somebody else says that, but that's essentially how I pronounce it. I know that uh, many of you get very upset when a word isn't pronounced the way you hear it, but once again, that's kind of a, um, a facet of our society and the different dialects that we have. But anyway, I find this really interesting because Canonical has joined forces and looking here at what they've been up to, they're looking to create this custom kernel that can be used with Ubuntu cloud images for release Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. So Canonical is continuing down that path of developing infrastructure, software, hardware, and support for Ubuntu to be used in conjunction with other services and other providers of services instead of development of the workstation. Now I'm not saying that Canonical is saying that the workstation operating system legacy part of Canonical is gone, but they are definitely showing that the majority of their focus is going to be on developing software for systems that are going to be going to be using cloud processes primarily. Some of the features that will be present in this kernel is InfiniBand and RDMA support. Zero HPC will be able to deliver optimized performance of compute intensive workloads on Azure A8, A9, and H series. Full support for accelerated networking, which is interesting. Direct access to the PCI device gains provides gains in overall network performance and gives the highest throughput and very low latency for guests that are built on Azure. Now this is interesting, 18% reduction in kernel size. Now the kernels can become very bloated. Having compiled Linux kernels before, the only way that I can see to get an 18% reduction in the kernel size is to take out those chunks that you don't need. So it's possible to, and it makes sense that this kernel, it's not going to be generic and made to support as much hardware as possible. It's going to be custom designed specifically for the purpose that it's being used for. Hyper-V socket capability, a socket-based host guest communications that does not require a network, and Hyper-V device drivers. Now, they're talking about Hyper-V. I'm not sure if they're being specific in talking about Microsoft Hyper-V or the generic term Hyper-V, meaning pretty much any virtualization software. So I'm not really sure, but I suspect they mean Hyper-V, meaning Microsoft Hyper-V. How can you tell if you're running the new kernel? Well, you probably won't be, but if you need to know, do, of course, a uname-r. So I could do one here. So we'll cruise up to use the command line. And I will do a uname-r. Oops. Uname-r. And I'm on Fedora kernel 25, 4.11.9-200. Now I do have several updates to do, but that is one way that you can quickly find out which kernel you're using. If you see Azure in the kernel, then you know that you are using that particular version. Next article, when we're talking about Microsoft driving serious Linux innovation, what does it mean for Linux? Well, this article is very interesting. It does suggest that Microsoft may have uh, not just innovation in Linux, but their own political view and their view of what Linux should be doing and where it's going. And they're actually going to be working to help shape the future of Linux, which for some that's very concerning. For me, it's not too concerning. If you think about all the companies that already support Linux and support development, uh, IBM, Google, uh, just to name a few, there are so many different companies out there that are, again, in the top 500 companies that are putting serious development into Linux. 
it doesn't really surprise me to see Microsoft also doing this type of development, and I don't think it's a threat necessarily to Linux because if you if you look at the whole code base for that Linux kernel, we're just talking about the kernel here. Uh, if somebody doesn't like what's put into the kernel for a specific version of a distro, of course, it's not going to be committed. So it's not like Microsoft can control the destiny of Linux, but they can add innovation to Linux and its development. And possibly, hopefully, it's something that the public in general would find very useful. I love this quote in this article. The days of Linux is a cancer, Balmerisms of 2001 have faded. So back when Steve Ballmer uh, took over the reins of the company, at least for a while, and, and, and honestly even well before then, he, found, he felt that Linux was a cancer. They, Microsoft's changed their tune quite a lot, and they now know that in reality they're going to have to work more side-by-side -side with Linux. Linux, they, I think they realize, is not going to trample them, although it has done a pretty good job in the server space. It's clear that Linux is the overall winner in the server space. We've even seen Unix basically evaporate and disappear. There still are some Unix distributions out there, but there really aren't as many as you would think. And worse yet, well, I can't say worse. I would have to say better yet. Linux has been developed to a point now where it's something that companies will use to run their servers on even if they're going to run say an Oracle database they'll still feel confident running Linux when they do that. So don't get worried about Microsoft taking over the world just because they're contributing to the Linux development and the Linux code base. Does it mean they don't have a vested political interest? No, they do, definitely. All right, next. Red Hat pledges patent protection for 99% of Fossware. Very interesting. The company does have a considerable amount of patents. They have over 2,000 patents, and they won't enforce any of them. If you license right. That's kind of scary. Red Hat says it's amassed those 2,000 patents and won't enforce them if the technologies they describe are used in properly licensed open source software. So that's a bit of a relief. Basically, they're saying here, if you're using a piece of software that they have a patent on as an open source product and it's properly licensed, you should be okay. Article goes on to say the company's made more or less the same offer since 2002 when it first made its patent promise to discourage patent aggression and free and open source software. So they are trying to protect open source software on the patent side so that a company can't come in or patent trolls and issue or buy new patents and then basically go after other companies that are using that particular open source software legally under an open source license. So licensing and patents, two different things, you know. Uh, you can almost think of one as backdoor entry and one as front door. So there is a fear of that happening, but their particular patent group, they're saying they will protect. Now they've revised the promise and they say the revised promise applies to all software, meaning the free software open source definitions of the FSF or the open source initiative. The thing about Red Hat is they are a for-profit company, so at any time they could say they're going to revoke this promise. Uh, there's nothing in the promise that is a covenant that says that it will be going in perpetuity. But right now I feel fairly confident that it's going to be okay, and those patents will be reserved for open source, and it will protect those open source licenses and packages. In other news, Linux on hardware again? Say it isn't so. GNOME partners with Purism on Librem 5 Linux-based privacy-focused smartphone. Now, this is definitely something that I personally would be very, very interested in seeing. I would seriously consider purchasing one. I think the big problem here is what applications are going to work on this phone and how many applications will be available. Microsoft has seen itself with its smartphone line how difficult that is to get somebody to start adopting their smartphones. The problem with Microsoft is whenever they get started and they're just beginning to make inroads, they seem to let their particular project, smartphone project, collapse. Now, they do have something coming down 
hopefully soon with new smartphones um, and we'll see what happens but the app store as it is right now is severely limited for Microsoft smartphones I guess it would have to have some type of x86 compatibility in my opinion to run all the apps that are available maybe not uh, those that are in the store the Microsoft store may work but anyway I digress I really look forward to this concept of a secure private phone that is run on true open source software. You probably would have to pay a premium for the hardware, but I would be willing to do that, so I'm pretty excited about that. Here the article goes on to say the Librem 5 smartphone by Purism has a long and difficult road ahead of it. Competing against the likes of Apple and Google on the mobile market has proven to be a death sentence for many platforms, including Microsoft with its failed Windows 10 mobile. Personally, I don't think they gave it enough time. Going on, with that said, we're rooting for Purism and its Pure OS as the world would benefit from a device that uses Linux and focuses very heavily, in my hope, on privacy and security. Would you be willing to dump your iPhone or your Android for a truly private and secure mobile phone? Well, okay, nothing's truly private or secure. We all know that. It's got to run on some network, right? But much more private and much more secure than a iPhone or Android. At least you don't have a company that's watching your every move. Theoretically, right? Are you still going to download the same applications? Would you be on Facebook? Are you going to use Google? Are you going to download apps that will help you like Google Maps? It all depends on app compatibility. We'll have to see what happens. Needless to say, to me it's a very exciting possibility. And with GNOME on board, Purism's chance for success with Librem 5 does increase immensely, but we'll see. Now I've been saying with GNOME 3, it's very clear that it has a mobile phone type of interface. I mean, it's something to me that would be perfectly comfortable on a tablet without a doubt. I can imagine it also on a cell phone. If you look at how it's designed, the scrolling features in, in GNOME, it would not surprise me at all to see it be pretty easy to fit into a phone. So there may be some code changes that need to be made, of course, because it's a different processor base. But even so, I really think that it would be something that would work very well. And let's hope. All right, last on our Linux list, a funny story. Linux Foundation head calls 2017 the year of the Linux desktop while running Apple's Mac OS himself. I'm trying not to laugh here. Now, many of you are going to chime in right away and say, but we know that Mac is actually built on Linux. That is not true. It's actually built on FreeBSD. Uh, slightly different animals, same basic concept. The rest, all the GUI, is courtesy Apple and closed, so it is not an open source element. The thing is, if you're the head of the Linux Foundation, I think you do have to use Linux. And I'm not saying you have to be a purist. You can definitely use a Mac on your own time and do what you want, but I can't imagine me going into work that espouses Microsoft primarily in their business environment and saying, no, 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 I won't use that. I'm going to use Linux, and, and you'll just have to deal with it. I think I'd probably lose my job, so I'm kind of surprised that he can get away with it. But again, he is the executive director of the Linux Foundation, Jim Zemlin, and he's saying it's the year of the Linux desktop while he's on a MacBook Pro. And don't get me wrong, I love MacBook Pros. I think they're awesome. I do like Mac OS. It has some very good features that trump Linux and Windows. Uh, I'm not saying that it's better than Linux or Windows. Personally, I like Linux best, but I'm used to it the most. But I would expect somebody, <laughs> somebody using, I had to laugh looking at this, somebody who is deeply ensconced in Linux uh, using Linux. Now, again, here he is on a plane using OS 10. Okay, not that big of a deal. This was back, well, not that far, September 10th. And here we have four years later, still rocking an iPad and doing slides under Mac OS. Now he made some kind of excuse saying that he couldn't build 
his slides in Linux. I'm baffled by that. I mean, come on. Just look at OpenOffice for a second. You cannot tell me, and he's saying there were certain functions and features that he couldn't get. I just can't believe it. Impress presentation, in my opinion, definitely good enough. Now, it's not perfect, and it's not as good as an Apple product necessarily. Actually, I think it is. So I forget what the Apple product's called. I know there's, there's pages for a window or for equivalent to Word. That's their word processor. I've used their uh, spreadsheet software. I don't like it. I've never used their application for developing slides. I mean, to me, it's easy enough to do this in Linux. You cannot say that you can't make an effective slide presentation using some type of application in Linux. LibreOffice, easy to install. In my humble opinion, works wonderful and does everything that we need it to do. This is funny. Look at this quote. I mean, would it be a big deal if a Coca-Cola executive drinks Pepsi or if Apple's head Tim Cook unveiled the next iPhone while using a Microsoft Surface device? Would it be? Of course it would be. So I found that one really interesting. Just kind of from a humorous standpoint, I feel I'm OS agnostic. I'll use any operating system that works best for me at the time. So I'm not saying one's greater than the other, but... If I did have a position like that, I'm pretty sure I would be expected to be doing it, doing my work in Linux. I'm supposed to be a proponent of Linux, and to come up with that opening quote, this is the year of the Linux desktop. But not for me. I'm using Mac OS. Anyway, that's Linux in the news. Did I get the date right when I gave it to you? Lucky day I did for Saturday, September 23rd, 2017. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. I always like to ask you to subscribe. I would also like to ask you to share the video. And I will see you next time on Fast Gadgets.